To me, the digital has transformed the kinds of engagements with students that I, I now have. So I've come from uh, a background where you essentially had a, a small number of different types of, of interactions. So you have a one-to-one, -one, you have a classroom tutorial, and you have the, the lecture, the kind of the broadcast mode. And into each one of those, we've introduced various technological components over the years. But I think what's happened recently is that the possibility to produce um, interconnected, social, networked learning environments is merging many of the affordances of each of those three modalities. I guess it's, it's a digital literacy question for, for educators and for students. It's how do we navigate in an educational space that is far more fluid than the ones that we, we used to have. There are significant um, challenges which in turn have, are presenting an amazing opportunity for face-to-face -face education. I think that when we're developing our face-to-face -face education activities, um, there, there is inevitably less pressure on some of the elements of, of, of planning. Okay, so that works as both a pro and pro and a con. So it can be wonderful that we arrive in a in a learning environment and we effectively co-construct that that learning amongst ourselves. But at times, that ability to tailor that educational interaction um, means that perhaps we're not as prepared as we, as we could be for that educational process. So whereas in the MOOC space, um, you're much more constrained in terms of the ways in which you can react when perhaps learning isn't going very well. So if you suddenly realise that there's you know, 5,000 people studying something on one week of your course and the vast majority of them misunderstood something fundamental, then it's quite difficult to, to change that. What we, what we found on the, on the course was that we had to be, um, we tried to be responsive, but you also have to trust to the, the network of learners to help themselves to a certain extent. The myth around mass open online courses is that they are dumbing down um, and that they um, lack coherence uh, um, and are a form of edutainment. But quite commonly now I, I, I say that edutainment is kind of the greatest compliment that could ever be paid to me. If I can entertain people through education and that sounds quite wonderful. Um, the reality is that there is equally as much if not more attention paid to issues of quality assurance and to learning, to, learning design and structure and feedback in the context of open education, massive open online courses, as there is in face-to-face -face learning. Bob Fox described it as, a, as MOOCs being the Trojan horse. By teaching tens of thousands of people, we rapidly find out what does and doesn't work. And what we rapidly discover is that you need to do learning design very, very carefully and stick to it and produce good quality content that, you know, surprise, surprise, conforms to pedagogic research. And what we're finding is that actually, yes, you can teach thousands of people and they, and they are um, genuinely gaining skills and they are more employable and they do engage in, in complex um, academic debates. They engage with a degree of critical reflection both on the material and on their own lives and how those come to play in the course. So they are being students in exactly the same way as any face-to-face -face student I encounter. It's quite wonderful to teach such a, a great diversity of people. And that diversity fires up the social learning experience because some of them bring um, expert knowledge to the course, right? which is fabulous. So we've scaffolded it and they, they effectively are acting as additional mentors and we, you know, we, 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 we get involved and we, and we step back and allow the conversations to emerge. So, so that's fabulous. But each of them also brings life experiences that can have quite a significant bearing on the course. One of the things that, that I think is the most um, exciting and also a little, um, I suppose, unnerving about being involved in these massive open online courses is, is wondering where they're going to go. I mean, I've, I've spent almost my entire life in higher education in one form or another. I'm 
entirely wedded to higher education as a mechanism for for changing people's perceptions and for encountering difference and going out and doing good stuff. You know, that's what that's what they're they're for. They're supposed to be challenging places, and yet at the same time, I'm now involved in. It's not wrong to say a technological revolution or technologically um, afforded revolution that is having a very significant impact on how higher education is is being practiced, and I think certainly the direction that higher education is going in. Some of that's really positive. The fact that more and more of us are recognising the need for very very effective learning design and understanding how to blend different modes of, of interaction, how to teach at, at scale and how to make the best use of, of the technology effectively so that um, we can be using our time as effectively as possible. So my main hope for for integrating the Portus MOOC content into my face-to-face -face learning would be that it would free all of my allocated contact hours with my students at Southampton to be ones like this or ones in a, in a small group. Ones where we can, you know, hammer the, the topics and argue and do all the things that are actually quite difficult to do at, at, at scale. Um, and that's why, of course, so many of us are interested in, in blending learning and, 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 and adopting those models. And, and that's fantastic. I think um, the flip side of that, though, is that this is happening very quickly. Remember my colleague uh, Hugh Davis saying, um, yeah, m maybe the avalanche is coming, but be prepared to I expect some unbundling. There will be a breaking apart of the different components of, of higher education. And I'm still not clear that we're in a position to understand the implications of that unbundling. And I, I do have a fear that, that technol technology may be seen as a way of, of um, um, of change that is focused on efficiency um, and scale rather than necessarily the, the quality of, of education. If we do it right, then MOOCs, um, the breaking apart of the different components, should, as I say in my, in my presentation, enable us to be the best research-informed educators that we have ever been and the most collaborative, pulling together people from all over the world from their different disciplinary backgrounds. But that's what I hope it will work out like. And I hope that we will maintain our campus universities where students benefit from interacting with each other um, and from the use of facilities and from all of those serendipitous encounters that, that universities create. But my, my real fear is that technology will provide an alternative. It's that that alternative may in the end be so much cheaper because there's so much less of this um, that um, students are almost forced to, to adopt that kind of a learning model. Um, and that would be a, a crying shame because, as I say, what I've, everything I've experienced from open education is that um, it is transformative and important. So it should be shared with as many people as possible. But we don't want to knock the universities down in the process. Thank you.